are you ready to uh, to take this in an entirely different direction? Yeah, now? wherever we want to go. Let's go. All right. Surf that so, wave. Uh, there have been times where we have leaked into and then pulled away from conversations about conspiracy theories. So I'm going to give you a choice <laughs> of uh, which of <laughs> which. Now, I know we've talked about Tower 7 a little bit. And you've got some really, really good, um, some pretty yeah. uh, amazing um, perspective on that that puts a lot of questions <laughs> into into people's minds. Um, so it could be that. Or, or it could be anything else. But I'm going to hand it over to you on as far as which conspiracy theory do you feel is less conspiracy theory and more, hey, let's take a real, real hard look at this because there is something there. Wow. Uh, yeah. So speaking of getting um, shit posters and hate mail, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? as if we didn't have enough of that, but you know, whatever. Um, fuck it. So uh, I actually, given the number of people that are dying now, so I mean, the, the whole 9-11 thing is fascinating and could be a long conversation. It could be a lot of fun. And I have a lot of strong opinions on for better or for worse. But given that in the world, we're having more than a 9-11 worth of people die every single day, I'm going to swing it around to um, coronavirus. Not that that hasn't been beat to death, but it's still actively killing people. So um, it hasn't been beat to death enough from my sort of stomp it out point of view. Um, the, the one thing I'm going to say about that, that a lot of people think is going to be really controversial, I think, and um, is the, I, I've, as an epidemiologist, so I have an MSPH in epidemiology two year from a top public health school and an MD, and uh, my father is an infectious disease pediatric expert, uh, and that's what I grew up with. So I actually grew up, you know, reading you know, the pediatric red book, which is a, you know, cool book of pediatric infectious disease. It's actually a fascinating read because it goes into history and stuff. But basically that the, the sort of first world, and I've already pissed some people off by even using that term, but the rich developed countries are just going to have to get it together and vaccinate the whole world, right? Uh, to get rid of coronavirus. And we're going to have to develop vaccines fast. And um, the anti-vax movement is just going to kill thousands and thousands and thousands of people, period, right? I just, uh, I'm hawkish on this and this is gonna freak some people out and some some of my friends on the cosmic right and the cosmic left and my, yeah, fuck that. Like literally your views are gonna kill staggering numbers of people and disrupt economies for long periods of time. And while they might, you know, save the planet a little bit of carbon emissions, which is valid and important. That's a whole nother topic we need to get into, you know, by how long it's gonna be before we resume normal air flight travel and all of that stuff and driving and tourism. Um, which, again, is a sort of a valid benefit in some totally horrible way to coronavirus death and disruption. That said, uh, like, until we just take this seriously, like smallpox or polio and vaccinate basically everybody as fast as we can to every new strain that comes out and aggressively quarantine, uh, we're just going to be dealing with this thing. And it seems to be getting more virulent, which is the scary thing. I mean, some of these new variants seem even worse than the previous one. And that's not a good sign. And RNA viruses mutate fast. This is going to be a real challenge. But I think we just need to spend globally the 10 or 20 trillion bucks or whatever this is going to cost, employ as many people as we possibly can. That will boost economic stuff and just shut this shit down. So I'm a total hawk when it comes to this, and that's got to be hopefully controversial enough to spark some some good discussion. <laughs> nice, Tom. Do you want to go first? Yeah, no, I'm I'm I am actually right there with you, Daniel. So I don't have a counterpoint. And I, what I will do <laughs> is I'll, I'll bring it back to just a uh, an example that's a real example, which is uh, my mom. So my mom lives in America. Mm. She lives in Las Vegas, and she's 80 years old. And we've had conversations uh, about the vaccine. And she, you know, through whatever conversation she's had outside of ours, um, hears things about, you know, should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? I don't know the side effects. And my, my, I keep circling back to you, mom. It's a real easy proposition. Do you like your chances on the side effects of the vaccine more or less than your chances out in the wild without the vaccine? That's it. Decide one way or the other. And, you know, for those people that have reservations about the, the vaccine, okay, well, there might be some stuff there to, to talk about. Who knows? I don't know. But 
the alternative is infinitely at this point worse, which is not just for you, but every person that you encounter. And that's the thing that I have the biggest fucking yep. problem with is people that say, well, I'm, a, you know, I'm okay. I'm strong. I'm young. I, you know, I'll, I'll take on Corona. That's fine. That's cool for you, bro. But when you're out there, you're putting other people at risk. So when I wore a mask, literally when we left the last retreat, Tracy and I went to um, a, it's called a, it's kind of like a hardware store and we bought five boxes of N95 masks and we wore them starting in, you know, like March 5th to the stairs and the, you know, the, the chagrin and the whispers of loads of people. And, um, and my, my perspective was that's fine that you're judging me, but actually I almost feel like you should be thanking me. Like, dude, I'm not doing this for me. Yes. I'm doing it for you. And that's the bit that and the um, community and yeah. health systems. Exactly. So I'm with you, dude. I'm hundred percent with you. No, there, I have no counter to that. Um, Boats, are you, are you, uh, you got anything or you want to go to tower seven? Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, honestly, my, my honest answer is I fall with both of you in of the, 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 I, I, I feel the same way now. Um, I, I stand on with Tom on the frustration at other people for not looking out for your fellow human um, because um, like, dude, I don't like, I don't wear a mask for me. Like just so I, like, and, and all my friends know this, like I hang, I have my friends and I have my two best friends. I, I will, I will call them out on stream. My two best friends do not take care in this way in any way, shape or form. One of them actually, um, has had parties and all that kind of stuff and is, is, is one of those and, and, and is very nonchalant. But they know when I'm with them, I wear a mask, I stand away from them and we're, I'm happy to spend time with you, but we're going to be as far away from each other as I can get. And, uh, and I'm definitely going to be wearing a mask. And it's not for me, it's for you guys, just in case I have it and I don't want to give it to you guys because that's not going to sit well on my conscience. It's got nothing to do with what happens to me. That doesn't sit well on my conscience. Now, the other thing that I would say um, that I agree with uh, with you, Daniel, about anti-vaxxing is, guys, uh, and, and Daniel, I'm sure you can maybe give me closer numbers. I'm not going to say any numbers because I am in no way an epidemiologist or, or someone who knows about vaccines or medical stuff. But I will tell you uh, a straight fact. If you were born between like the early 90s and the early 2000s, you were vaccinated for stuff. That's what's up. Like you, you were vaccinated for polio. Um, for, you know, a bunch, like you, every child got loads of jabs. And guess what? If you are okay right now, then guess what? The COVID jab is fine. And for even, even further than that, if you have ever traveled outside of your country and gone to a different country, specifically, we're talking Asia, um, the Middle East, um, uh, Africa, um, South America, places like that, um, if you've traveled there, you have been vaccinated for something in those countries. And if you've received one of those vaccines and you are fine and you enjoyed your holiday and you came back and you work and everything's fine, then guess what? COVID vaccine is fine for you. Like that's, that's the all that's, you have to relate it to things that have happened in your life already. If, if you're struggling to believe the science and you're struggling to believe the media or whatever, please think about things that have happened in your own life already that you can base off of evidence within your own life. If you are a child that was born between the 90s and the early 2000s, you were vaccinated. Um, not to mention a lot of people earlier than that as well. Um, you were definitely vaccinated. And if you're fine now, then any COVID vaccine you receive, you will be fine from. Like that, that that's, that's just it. And like Daniel said, you're putting other people at risk. Now, whether or not, you know, I, I stand on the side of, every person like i stand on the side of i feel like every person should get the 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 vaccine now whether i feel we should inhibit freedom of choice is a whole nother conversation that i really struggle with because i feel like in my head i go yes military everyone get a vaccine like line the fuck up and let's get this fucking done but also i go you know a lot of the white western world at this point in our progression will not stand for that and it like rebellions will break out like the fact that we have had anti-lockdown protests in the uk with thousands tens of thousands of people in london while this is going on 
is crazy to me. So we're not even lock, we're not even putting harsh restrictions in terms of making sure that you are actually locking down because in the UK it's locked down, but people don't. And then not to mention there's no like ordered or, or compulsory vaccination thing. So at this point, I think it would kick up a hell of a fuss if we did try and militarize and 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 uh, get everyone vaccinated across the planet really quickly. But uh, I stand on the side of fuck you, you shouldn't have a choice. Other people's lives matter than your opinion, so fuck you is kind of where I stand on that. But also, you know, you, 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 can, you can play with other people's lives. That's, that's not up to you. Um, so that's where I stand on it. But yeah, go for it, Dana. I should add a qualifier. I am all for a nuanced, sophisticated, data-driven debate about which vaccines, what, how many doses, for whom, in what order, like you know prioritizing and and all of that stuff right and uh, so it's not like i don't appreciate that there is nuance to this and subtlety you know i spend some of my time listening to you know virologists you know going into all kinds of excruciating detail about variants and you know the degree to which these may or may not apply and does this really help prevent long COVID and are people who are vaccinated just as good transmitters, even if they don't have as many symptoms as other people. I mean, there is a lot of nuance and complexity to this. So I don't want in my hawkishness to give the impression that I don't think there isn't a lot of room for reasoned, data-driven, intelligent, scientifically-based debate, because there still is. There still is a pretty large amount we don't know about the long-term efficacy of these vaccines and their other impact, and again, again, things like long COVID and all of that, and how these will relate to different strains, and should we have, you know, like quadrivalent vaccines that pr protect against multiple strains, and how will that work, and are people going to need to get boosters, and, and all of those things. There's, there's room for intelligent conversation within my hawkishness, but the basic point is that we need to globally figure out how to shut this shit down that I'm super hawkish about, just to add some qualifiers. And, and I, I second that as well, 100% second that. Like, we need to be testing every uh, strain of the, the vaccine. We need to be doing thorough testing. And, I, and by that, I mean going to corporations. I look at you. Don't be spending, don't be rushing these out because you want money. Like, I would rather you test it for a little bit longer and give us the guaranteed good stuff rather than chucking me a, a half a half half ass vaccine i guess so you know I, I also stand very much on that as well there needs to be debate we need to be talking about what's right for certain people and also what vaccines work for certain age groups you know i know in the uk we're looking at you know the pitzer one isn't working for some of the variants but the you know the uh, astrazeneca one is working for people between you know x and x ages you know and it's so yeah i, I fully agree with you it's not black and white but the answer is if your question is whether you should or shouldn't that is very black and white the, the the other stuff around that is not black and white though i fully fully agree with you hope you all enjoyed this pod clip hit us with the holy trinity go to our facebook instagram and youtube which is at homie and the dude like follow and subscribe to all of those and thanks again guys have an awesome day